It's no secret that ranged infantry are among the most overpowered units in the game, but that does beg the question, which ones are the very best? Well, beg that question no longer, because today we're here to count down the top 10 ranged infantry units in Total War Warhammer 3. Kicking us off, we have the Handgun Zombie Pirate Gunnery Mob, which is a bit of a mouthful. Now this unit is here for a number of reasons. Stats wise, it's pretty strong with a good bit of armor piercing damage and range and enough ammo to take down most armies at their tier and even better if they land all their shots. And the tier is really the reason they're making the list. If these were late game additions to the roster, they'd be fine, but nothing to write home about. But you can recruit these lads pretty much instantly in the Vampire Coast campaigns. They're not only pretty great gunner units, but they're also dirt cheap to recruit and maintain, making them incredible value for the money. They can take down units far more expensive than themselves and pay for their costs several times over for just a couple of good barrages per battle. Now, sure, if they get caught in melee, they're about as much use as a chocolate teapot, but who really cares? If they die, you can replace them for the next to nothing and get right back to it. I really don't have a lot to say about these lads because the bottom line really is that they're a pretty decent unit for a stupidly cheap price. If you're playing as the vampires and look for a way to contend with early armor, these are just the ticket. Next up, we have the Celestial Dragon Crossbows. Going over to Cathay, we have a classic of strong ranged units that I'm sure you're all familiar with. On the missile side of things, we have pretty top-notch range, plenty of ammo and armor piercing damage. All of that with a curved fire and arc, meaning fire from the safety of the back lines is totally viable. And aside from all this, you also have a unit that's pretty damn tough with higher armor than some endgame front lines units, shields, and halfway decent melee stats. Now the damage there isn't anything crazy, so keeping them out of melee and firing from a safe distance is the way to go to get the most damage per second, but still, being able to survive in some light combat is a great thing for a unit to have. So if they do get flanked and dragged into combat, they'll be able to keep themselves mostly alive until help arrives, before making sure they get back to a firing distance in no time. These are getting no higher because, spoilers, other units do very similar things to this, but better. That being said, these are still an outstanding unit with that range, firing arc and damage in particular being a killer combo. Next, we have Great Swords Shades. These are very similar to the Dragon Crossbows, but I believe they're just a tiny bit better. You're losing a little bit of range and ammo, but you're gaining some more damage, including armor piercing, so it's a pretty fair trade off if you ask me. They still frown an arc, so back lines are a very viable place to have them without the risk of very much friendly fire. However, on the melee side of things, this is where they start to run away with the game. Now yes, much less armor, however the melee stats and weapon strength make them into actually viable front lines units. Now in the end game, will they be able to go one on one against some sword mass and win? Probably not but they'll be able to fight their way out of most flanking units or at the very least give them enough damage back that it takes any value out of the charge. Of course, you want to focus on keeping them out of range as much as possible since the damage there is higher, not to mention safe to pull off, but if the opportunity arises for them to go into melee and rack up some kills, then they should absolutely go for it. It feels a little bit cheaty to put them on this list for ranged units when they're clearly really a hybrid weapons unit if you ask me, but still an excellent addition to any army. Next we have the Way Watchers. Now moving back towards some pure ranged units and Way Watchers are some of the best archers you can find in game. Zero melee capabilities mean they'll die in seconds if they get caught out, but that's not the point. They have huge range, plenty of ammo and a very respectable armor piercing damage, all with that nice curved firing arc. You could use them on the back line, sure, and they'll be able to pick apart enemies just fine. Even better than fine if you keep them firing from enemy units with that hawkish precision. However, you can also send them onto the flanks of enemies pretty easily and fairly risk-free with their Stalk, Firewalls Moving, Vanguard and Woodsman. You can place them more or less wherever you want and stick them on Skirmish to keep them safe no matter what happens. With Stalk, they're pretty much guaranteed not to be spotted until they want to be. And with Woodsman, they can move through forests faster than statistically almost anything they come up against. This does require a tiny bit more micro to keep them alive and moving in the right direction, but the damage output can be significantly higher with the much clearer firing line. No matter how you choose to use these lads, they'll rack up a ton of value, so just do yourself a favor and use them any way you can. Coming towards the midpoint, we have the Lead Belchers. This is another unit that kind of feels like cheating because they're not really like other ranged infantry. These are essentially cannons being lugged around by ogres, making them into a very mobile form of artillery. But hey, they're classed as ranged infantry, so here we go. Now the range here isn't quite artillery level, but still 200 is nothing to scoff at and will outrange nearly every other ranged infantry unit in the game. The damage is also amazing, with high mass and high damage projectiles being slung down range in a straight line. Now yes, that straight line does complicate things once the lines clash and finding a firing angle can become a bit of a chore. However, if you use them alongside Noblage, you can fire straight over their heads in most cases and still sneak off a few shots here and there once the melee begins. Alternatively, you can use them with Ogre infantry and they might be large, but they're spread out. So again, get a few shots off here and there when it's possible. If all else fails, they have enough speed to get into the flanks of enemies, you just have to be careful of them getting caught out. Their melee stats really aren't anything to write home about, but that mass and speed can get them out of a ton of pickles that they have no business getting out of, so use it to your advantage to keep them safe. If you can maintain a steady firing rate, they can rack up a ton of damage both on clumps of infantry and large monstrous targets. With projectiles like these, nothing is off the table as far as targeting is concerned. 
Breaking into the top five, we have the Rattling Guns. It's about time we got to the Skaven in this list, and what a first entry this is. Rattlings are absolutely one of my favourite units in the entire game, and I don't really feel like I need to explain why. I mean, they're literally rats with Gatling Guns. What more do you need in life? Maslow forgot about this one. Anyway, in-game they're top-notch with decent range and absurd damage outputs, with a literal storm of armor-piercing damage being slung down range at anything unfortunate enough to approach them. Not only will this rip enemies to pieces, it'll also slow their approach thanks to the suppressing ammo, meaning they'll get caught in the firing line for even longer. Now yes, they are actually useless if they get caught in melee with large hitboxes, no speed or melee stats, but if you can keep them safe, they can wipe out entire armies, especially if you can micro them to focus fire. Now they do need line of sight, which is a little bit of a hassle, but by aiming for large targets first, you can take down any major threats on the front lines before turning your attention to anything left. And honestly, it's the Skaven, so firing at some Skaven slaves hitting me infantry is totally fair game too. They're a total glass cannon, but good lord, it is a cannon that absolutely chunks whatever you aim it at. Next up we have the Chaos Dwarf Blunderbusses, and speaking of chunks, these are quite possibly some of the best pure gunner units in the entire game. Now yeah, Elephant in the room, very low range, especially compared to basically everything else on that list. But within that range, the enemy might as well be walking into a meat grinder. The damage is out of this world strong, firing projectiles in a straight line that can take out entire units in a single barrage, not to mention knock them on their ass. Whether you're aiming for clusters of enemy infantry or focusing on something bigger, these will get the job done in record time, leaving your melee troops free to take their smoke break until something tougher shows up. Obviously, the range means enemies will likely close the distance before they can get off too many shots, and once they do, blunderbusses aren't exactly the best in melee, but they'll survive thanks to that high armor. Just get them out and firing as soon as possible and you can't go wrong. Another unit that's a little bit of a hassle to use on the front lines clash since they need that line of sight, but if you can manage this minor inconvenience, they can clean up versus practically anything. Getting onto the podium, we have the Poisoned Wind Mortars. Hopping back to the Skaven Fort is one of the most insane units to ever be added to the game. This weapons team has artillery class range and damage, but can move around like an infantry unit. A slow infantry unit, yes, but still, faster than most artillery and can hit just as hard. They fire high damage explosive projectiles in a huge arc, dealing massive damage to anything unlucky enough to be in their sights. Doesn't matter if it's Ironbreakers or Black Orcs, they'll feel the damage all the same and it's a whole lot to feel. I don't really know what else to say other than just look at that damage, it's actually crazy. Now, the downsides, because there's not really a shortage. They're still slow as mentioned earlier, they're useless in melee and will die in seconds against the most basic of flanks, oh and if units get too close they won't be able to fire, meaning you need to keep them well back to keep them effective. It's not the most micro intensive unit in the game, or even in this list for that matter, but still, if you move them up with your army, like you know, you should, you'll need to keep your eye on them to keep the damage coming once enemies close in. If you can manage that minor task, you'll be rewarded with damage and disruption rarely seen coming from anything else in the game. Screw artillery, just take these guys and watch the fireworks. And taking second place, we have Infernal Guard Fireglaives. And back to the Chaos Dwarves we come. Again, what can I say? Two factions have some pretty crazy ranged units, so I couldn't not pick a couple from each. The Fireglaives are one of those units that can be a doom stack without even building Lord skills or anything like that. The base units alone, with no XP or hell, even a Lord, can wipe entire armies off the map, no problem. And looking at their stats, it's not really hard to imagine why. Ranged first, since that's, you know, kind of the whole point. Medium range, tons of ammo, and a crazy amount of damage mean they can wipe out most threats before they even get close. Now yes, it's a straight line, but that's nothing that a little organization can't fix. And if enemies do close the gap, they're also pretty damn good in melee, with very high armor, and defense, and melee attack, and damage that ain't too shabby either. What more do you need, other than 80 more of these guys to do the exact same thing? The level of firepower here is crazy to have in a unit that's also this good in melee. Honestly, it's a little bit insane they haven't been nerfed into the ground, but while they're this good, you might as well use them. Just give them some spacing and checkerboarding for clear firing lines, prioritize keeping them firing over melee, and you'll have a grand old time. And coming in first place, who could have guessed it? It's the Sisters of Avalon. Yeah, I should probably get some new material, but I'd be lying if I said anything other than these ladies deserves to be at the top of this list. They are simply bananas. Huge range of a curved firing arc. In that range, they can sling magical, flaming, armor-piercing, explosive projectiles that decimate pretty much anything they come up against. They're pinpoint accurate, like only the elves can be, and should something be lucky enough to close the gap, they can hold their own in melee, not too bad either. Now, they're not as strong as Fireglaives when it comes to melee, but that extra range, the fact that they can deal it safely behind the front lines, and explosive firepower that can take out single tags and infantry with ease, sets them just a little bit above the rest. They combine the best parts of almost every single unit on this list, and while they may not be the best at any one thing, the full package here is unbeaten by any other unit in the game to this day. And that's our list. Did I miss something that you thought should have made it? Let me know down in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and if you want more Warhammer 3 content, then check out this video here, counting down the top 10 artillery units in the game.